Well, let's get more on the events in America now. We're joined by U.S. political adviser Mo Vella, who is a former senior adviser to President-elect Joe Biden. And we have former U.S. Representative Joe Walsh, who uh, started off as a Trump supporter and then ran against Donald Trump in the 2020 Republican presidential race. Uh, good to speak to both of you this morning. What did you make of it? Uh, let's come to you first of all, Mabella. Uh, what did you make of the scenes yesterday? Surreal, sad, disgusting, disturbing, appalling. And I could go on. And. I mean, one of the things that has been raised, and it, it's true, isn't it? It, it? it seemed to sort of sneak up on the security there. I mean, has it, it baffled you that they were allowed in? It wasn't a, an extraordinary force, was it? They just seemed to charge in. I think that uh, I have actually had the privilege of serving twice in the White House in a senior executive role. And I will tell you, uh, the congressman will tell you, the Capitol and the White House are the two most secure buildings in the nation, probably. And I agree with your assessment. Uh, I think there will be plenty of time after this to assess and evaluate why this was so easy to accomplish by these mobsters. Uh, it was way too easy to breach this security perimeter. Uh, again, I've been working in the White House twice in my life. Uh, I never, never dreamed or thought I'd ever see what happened today in the United States of America. Joe Walsh, it was extraordinary for us sitting here last night on the other side of the Atlantic, <clears throat> watching these scenes unfold. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know that building incredibly well. You've been there, I'm sure, on many, many occasions. What was it like for you, for somebody who has worked in politics in America for, for a huge uh, number of years, to see those protesters overrun the Capitol building like that? I agree with Mo. It was a very sad, dark day. I watched it and wept. I think millions of Americans watched it on TV yesterday and wept. I mean, think about it. The world watched an attempt to physically overthrow an American election, an insurrection. My fear, though, is this. My fear is there's going to be more of this. We have a president who incited this. He's still inciting it. And we have millions and millions of Americans who will not accept the legitimacy of this election. I worry there's more violence coming. So what's to be done about it then? I mean, you are very clear that Donald Trump is responsible for, at the very least, the emotion that drove those people to walk into the Capitol building. Um, and, and it appears to be doing little to dissociate himself from it, certainly. So what is to be done about it? Is it just going to be a kind of war? Is he going to be, have to be physically removed? Well, I, I, and I don't know where Mo stands on this, but we've got 14 more days of Donald Trump. I think he's got to be removed now. I don't think he's capable of carrying out his oath of office. He demonstrated that clearly again yesterday. This is a very dangerous time. And as long as he's in the White House, uh, I, I think it's really scary for all of us right now. Mo, what's your, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's two weeks. It would be unprecedented, or 10 days, I think. It would be unprecedented for the stating president to be removed this early. But lots of politicians, lots of commentators calling for impeachment, the 25th Amendment to be invoked. Could you see something like that happening? What's involved with that if it was going to happen? My heart says yes. We absolutely should uh, pursue that. My mind and my brain say, from a practical perspective, the lawyer in me is concerned about the time. I don't know that from a technical perspective, we have enough time to execute and implement the 25th Amendment and the process that is required therefrom or an impeachment proceeding. Uh, should we? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with the congressman. I just don't know if it, it would work practically. That's all. I mean, you say you, you know the White House security and, and you know the operation behind that. Um, right. uh, we spoke to Martin Luther King III, eldest son of Martin Luther King, um, earlier on the programme, and, and he drew a comparison 
and a contrast, in fact, between the way the Black Lives Matter peaceful protests were handled in the summer and the way this was handled. Do you think if it had been a Black Lives Matter protest that had tried to storm the Capitol building, it would have been handled differently? Uh, are you asking me? Uh, I don't yes, want to I jump was in. Actually, yes. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, yes, the answer is unequivocally, without any reticence or hesitation, the answer is yes, it would have been treated completely differently. Uh, there's no doubt about it in my mind. Why do you think it would have been treated differently and how? Because we have, we have experienced a very clear pattern of racism especially these four years under Donald Trump. And you can go back to see Black Lives, Matters, Black Lives Matter protests, for example, and you can visibly today, one of the reasons I was so angry, and I wept too, Congressman, but one of the reasons I got so angry was because of the lax attitude from some of the law enforcement toward these protesters. They were literally taking selfies with them, Kate. You didn't see that at a Black Lives Matter protest. They were pepper spraying them and tear gassing them and harassing them. So is the implication them. then that you felt they almost had sympathy with them? It, 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 Mo is so spot on. These were white protesters. If we are talking about a group of thousands of black protesters or Muslim protesters, they would not have gotten anywhere near no. that building. No. Joe, Joe, they Joe would have all been Sorry. Well, because the security guards are political, because they are part of Trump's regime. So therefore their well, mindset no. is with them. Is that what you're saying? But but uh, but to Mo's point, and I'm very pro-cop and I was a congressman and I love our Capitol Police. But police, law enforcement in this country does not treat black lives like they treat white lives. That's just That's right. a fact, and that needs to be fixed. Uh, we've got some footage of, of the moment, uh, Mo, uh, hopefully you can see this as well, of when the protesters were able to breach the lines. This, this particular yeah. footage I've seen in, in the commentary is very much that the police sort of walk away, they pull the barriers back, and they yeah. allow the protesters in. Um, I wonder if, had they put up more force, whether there would be more casualties. We know, mm. tragically, four people have now died. One woman was shot and then died from her injuries and three other people have died as well. Um, but, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, it's fascinating for us and, and terrifying as well because we look at our heart of politics in the UK at Parliament, the Houses of Parliament, and we see how strict the controls are there. We've had people try and raid that building in the past, of course. Uh, yeah. I wonder what your thoughts were when you see that footage, when you see those uh, security officials, those police officers, whoever they are, just pull the, pull the barricades back and walk away. My, my initial reaction, Ben, is that I want to get to the bottom of it. Uh, again, having been protected by the United States Secret Service in my two White House tenures, the, watching them pull the barricade back I had like a kind of a nightmare moment, honestly, thinking what if that had happened when I was inside the White House and there were protesters, which they were commonly lining the, the streets outside the White House. And if the barricade was removed of it, removed the way they just did that, people's lives were in jeopardy. Our members of Congress lives were in jeopardy, their staffs. It's amazing. I mean, we can't forget that there have been reports of sort of explosive devices. Mm. Anything could have happened, yes. couldn't it? You know. And they could have been armed. We don't... We, they could have been armed. They could have... Mm. I mean, all kinds of things could have happened. Absolutely. Joe Walsh, um, you started off uh, way, way back, as Kate said, as a Trump supporter. You saw Donald Trump as potentially a, a, the solution to what was going on in, in America at the time. That shifted quite dramatically to where you are today. What has happened over the last four years from this Donald Trump presidency uh, that has so divided America? How has he managed to shift, even from your perspective, as somebody who thought could be the solution to being the person who is, who is inciting all of this? Well, look, I voted for him in 16 because our political system is broken and I felt like it needed some disruption. But think about this. Donald Trump is an utterly horrible human being. He made that very, very clear quickly after he became president. This country's divided, though. We were divided before Trump. 
And I would say he's probably like the ugly product of the divide and only a broken political system could elect such a horrible human being. But as a lifelong Republican, he still has a hold on the Republican party. It's still his party. So four years it's taken for it to get to this point. How long, uh, Joe Walsh, do you think it's gonna take to heal that divide? Can Joe Biden do that? I think Joe Biden can help heal the divide in the country. I think the Republican party is toast. I mean, I think we're watching right now before our eyes the, the breakup of the Republican Party. I don't think, I think it's days as a national party in America are over. Wow. Extraordinary. Ben and, Kate, ben and Kate, can I just say one yeah. thing to the people of Great Britain? I want to just say something positive and end on a really good note here. We're, we're, we're very sad and experiencing something horrible in our country. But I want to point out that Congressman Walsh and I are from opposite parties. Mm. And I want to give him com commendation because this entire year, he, bu he bucked his own party. And I want to tell the people of the United Kingdom, we can still come together. The Congressman and I are from opposing parties, but here we are agreeing because we believe in our nation and our democracy. And I just want to point out something positive on a day where we're in so much pain. Well, that Thank is you. lovely of you to do it. And Joe is nodding and we're a big fan of hope and positivity on this show. So thanks for bringing it back because uh, pretty shocking scenes all it's around. It's an integral point as well. In the middle of a global pandemic, when there's a public health crisis yeah. around the world that you guys there in the States are coping suffering with as from, well and yeah. suffering from. Uh, it's extraordinary. But we thank you very much for joining us this morning and sharing your very passionate uh, thoughts about what you've seen in the Capitol building.